Paris is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world. Its iconic monuments, museums, gardens, restaurants, and cafes attract millions of visitors every year. France is also home to almost 7 million immigrants. In fact, 1 in 10 people in France is an immigrant. Just before the pandemic, I had the opportunity to live and study in this amazing city. And for a while, I thought I was going to make it my home. Hello, hello. Welcome to Two Law. My name is Alexis McNally. I'm a Haitian American human rights lawyer. Through Two Law, I'll be demystifying the legal career for early and aspiring lawyers. Today, I'll be talking about my experience getting my LLM in Paris. So, I went to Indiana University knowing that I wanted to take advantage of as many opportunities that the school had to offer. And I did pretty much every single international opportunity that I could. During my first summer, I traveled to Buenos Aires and I worked at a law firm there as part of a fellowship program that Indiana University offered. And then for my second year of law school, I got involved with the Center for Constitutional Democracy. I worked on peacemaking and constitution building and got to travel to Burma and Thailand with my professors. And then during my third year of law school for my entire 3L year, I went abroad and got my master's of law at Paris too. And so in 2020, I was able to graduate with both my LLM and my Juris Doctor. Um, from Paris to and Indiana University. I didn't always think I'd spend my third year of law school in Paris. Indiana University had several other options that I could have chosen from. Initially, I wanted to go to Trinity College Dublin, but the fees for that program were way too expensive and it was more cost effective for me to study in Paris. Another reason why I found Paris to be more attractive was that I was already a bit familiar with it. I had studied abroad in Newcastle upon Tyne while I was an undergrad, and two of my roommates were French. I had visited France a couple of times, and I felt like I already kind of had the lay of the land. And then there was this opportunity to finally get my French together. I have been teaching myself French since I took a few courses in high school, and I was excited for the opportunity to immerse myself in the French language and solidify my French speaking skills. The program offered in Paris in English was a master's in European Union law. The classes were really meant to give students the opportunity to understand the European Union legal system and governing institutions. But there was this comparative element to the course as well. So even though we were studying European Union law, we also looked at the laws of the United States and the laws of countries around the world. The program had a fixed list of courses. My favorites included environmental law, human rights, and employment law. There was also this opportunity for me to swap out one of my courses for an independent research study. And so I did an independent research paper on the rights of persons with disabilities in Europe in relation to the labor sector. One thing that I thought was really cool was that the university also offered free French courses. This was great for students wanting the opportunity to practice and develop their skills in a classroom setting. There were actually some very stark differences from the way the United States does law school in general to the way that things were taught in Paris. First, everything was pretty much lecture-based. The notion of a classroom discussion was just not a thing for most of my professors. Instead, every class was about two to three hours of lecture. So some days were quite long, um, but we didn't have class every day, so it kind of balanced out. Another thing is that some classes didn't have a book to go along with the lectures. For some classes, we were given a list of about 50 books and told that if we wanted to learn more about a subject from a book rather than a lecture, that we could just refer to one of those texts on the list. 
This is way different from how things are run in the United States, where there is a set reading for every course, if not every class, and the lectures coincide directly with a particular text. In other classes, there were lots of student presentations. We'd be split up into groups or assigned a topic individually to present to the class. This could be kind of frustrating because there were definitely topics that I would have preferred to be taught by the professor rather than by my peers, but we all did our best to learn from one another. Similar to US law school, there was one final at the end of every class that determined our grade. This was generally a written test, but for some classes, it was a presentation of some kind. There were about 15 of us on the program, and we actually came to become kind of close. We still keep up with each other regularly in our group chat, and people meet up all the time as well. My classmates came from all over. We had people from Belgium, Germany, Italy, Greece, Russia, the Philippines, Vietnam, and Japan. Five of us were American from different parts of the United States, and we would all just hang out together a lot outside of class. We went on trips, we got dinner, we did yoga and karaoke, we saw plays. We, we actually just had a really good time. Life in Paris was good. I lived in this studio apartment in this really cute area of Paris called Le Marais. There was really great shopping and restaurants nearby. I actually stumbled upon my apartment by accident and had no idea at the time that I was in this highly sought after district. So when I first got to Paris in September, I was getting around by Metro. But after a few weeks, the metro system was essentially shut down for basically the rest of the time that I was in Paris because there was this massive public transit strike. The French know how to shut it down. I actually really admire this kind of organizing. If Americans were as organized as the French, we would probably have a livable minimum wage and a better, more accessible, more affordable healthcare system. But yeah, after the strike started and basically for the rest of my time in Paris, I could not consistently use the metro to get around. So I basically walked everywhere which was perfectly fine because I was in Paris. I needed to make some money to help offset my expenses and I landed an internship at the German Marshall Fund for the United States. Another one of the great things about France is that there is no such thing as an unpaid internship. Regulations are in place so that the least an intern can make is 500 euros per month. I find this to be really incredible and another example of how France protects the rights and dignity of workers, even when you are a student and you are working as a trainee. The German Marshall Fund is a think tank that strives to build and defend democracy and strengthen the relationship between the United States and Europe. Their fellowship alumni include the likes of French President Emmanuel Macron and former Georgia State Representative Stacey Abrams. This was my first time working at an organization like this, and I actually found my job to be pretty interesting. My boss was amazing, and we collaborated on GMF's leadership and fellowship programs and diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives. Also during this time, I was interning unpaid at the U.S. State Department. I had done an internship over the summer just before leaving for Paris, and I was asked to stay on and lead an intern project to evaluate the rights of persons with disabilities globally. The State Department wanted to see where the world was in terms of legislation and policies for people with disabilities and use this information to set priorities for future engagement.
from Paris, it's also really easy to travel around the rest of Europe. I was able to go to Italy and visit a friend in Verona in my first semester. One of the highlights of my time in Paris is when my mom came to visit. It was her very first time out of the country, and it was so great to be able to take her around and show her what life can look like outside of the United States. We did a nighttime cruise on the Seine and saw the Eiffel Tower in all its glory, visited the Chateau von Seine and Versailles, and a bunch of other places. And of course, we stuffed our faces with French pastries and bread. My time in Paris came to a close, though, in March 2020. Can you guess what happened? That's right. COVID. The Rona. It came out of nowhere and just screwed everything up. Some of you will remember this, but the world got fair warning that things were going to hit the fan with this virus, and we basically did nothing. Governments globally failed us. There were reports as early as fall of 2019 of entire towns in China being blockaded to keep the virus from spreading. There were reports of the first cases in France and the government didn't even blink an eye. And then it was like overnight chaos, absolute chaos. Italy was the first major shutdown that I remember. This is because my human rights professor ended up getting stuck and was unable to come to class. So his classes went virtual even before everything went to absolute pieces. Then in March 2020, Trump announced that the borders were going to close to all non-essential travel. I had like a week to get in before the borders closed and I was going to be locked away from my home and my family. I made the choice to leave. I packed up my little apartment in Paris and that was it. Overnight, everything changed. The whole direction of where I thought I was going with my life shifted. It shifted to reconnecting with family that I hadn't spent a lot of time with since I started law school in 2017. It shifted to going back to Illinois and Georgia, where we rode out the worst of the pandemic, taking joy and solace in the fact that we continue to survive. Even though things didn't turn out the way I expected, I'm really grateful for the experience. And I think that what I learned about myself while living alone in another country was invaluable. Making a home for myself in Paris helped me to learn more about myself. I'm all about self-discovery and knowing oneself Doing this program helped me explore my ability to adapt and thrive in a completely foreign environment and helped me better understand my boundaries and my passions. So what happened next? What happened after Paris? Oh my gosh, I can't wait to take you guys on the journey as we continue to dig into legal careers and legal degrees and all of the different lives that a lawyer can live. Till next time, bye!